Hello, my name is Ivor Prajdic and I'm a doctoral student of musicology at the Music Academy of Zagreb in Croatia. In the following 20 minutes, I'm going to present my research of the opera Amphitryon by Boris Papandopoulos. I have already given a slightly different version of this presentation at the international workshop Music Between Political Agitation and Autonomy, organized by Institute of Art History at the Czech Academy of Sciences and held in Prague in September 2022. Boris Papandopoulos was a Croatian composer, conductor, music writer and teacher. According to Papandopoulos in his interview for Croatian radio television in 1985, his father was a Russian aristocrat of Greek descent and his surname Papandopoulos probably ended with the letter S which disappeared with time. His father died when he was only two years old. His mother's side of family was the artistic one. His grandmother Maria Ružička Stroci was a well-known theater actress, his uncle Tito Stroci was an important stage director, actor and writer, while his mother Maja Stroci Pecic was a renowned singer important for introducing art songs and lead to Zagreb audiences. His stepfather Bela Pecic was a pianist and frequently performed with Papandopoulos' mother in concerts as her piano accompanist. Papandopoulos studied composition with Croatian composer Blago Ebersa at the Zagreb Academy of Music, where he graduated in 1929. Igor Stravinsky, a friend of the family, had suggested to his mother that Papandopoulos should go study conducting to Vienna with Dutch conductor and composer Dirk Fock, who was greatly admired by Stravinsky. Papandopoulos studied conducting with Fock at Neues Wiener Conservatorium from 1925 to 1928. After his studies, Papandopoulos worked until the end of the year 1934 in Zagreb as conductor of amateur ensembles, choirs Kolo and teachers choir Filipovic, and community orchestra of Croatian Music Institute. Unable to find a lasting professional engagement in Zagreb, in January 1935 he moved to Split to work as a conductor of choirs Zvonimir and Sokolski Zbor, as well as to be a teacher of piano and music theory subjects in local music school. Before coming to Split, Papandopoulos' compositional output consisted of about 50 compositions for various ensembles and solo instruments. Papandopoulos stayed in Split until the autumn of 1938 and composed around 30 compositions, many of them influenced with Dalmatian folklore. Split is remarkably important for his operatic output. His first opera, Sunchanica, or The Sunflower Girl, was finished there in 1935, and his second comic opera, Amphitryon, was entirely composed in Split. As indicated by the dates in the manuscript score, Papandopoulos composed Amphitryon in less than a year and a half, between April 1936 and September 1937. First act was finished in September 1936, second in August 1937, and third in September 1937. That suggests that the whole third act was composed, astonishingly, in a little more than one month. Libretto for Amphitryon was written in Croatian by Mio Stimac and Enrico Golishani after Molière's comedy of the same name. Molière's French language play was inspired by a Latin language comedy by Roman playwright Titus Maxius Plotus, with Greek mythological character Amphitryon as its title character. Other characters of the opera are listed on the screen, as well as supporting characters present in the choir and dance ensemble. First act of the opera is situated in the Greek military camp, as well as fictional places, celestial space and tavern at Olympus. Main place of action in the acts 2 and 3 is in Thebes, Greece, in and near Amphitryon's house. The time is designated as mythical in the manuscript. Libretto is divided into three acts and six tableaux, as shown in the presentation. First tableau of Act 1 begins at the Greek military camp, with Amphitryon and Sosias cheering the soldiers for the battle with Persians. The soldiers are dispersing, ready for battle, but Amphitryon and Sosias feel homesick and decide to return to their wives. Second tableau of Act 1 follows Zeus, who orders the night and the hours of night to make the night as long as possible so he can live for Earth with Mercury, both disguised as Amphitryon and Sosias, and seduce Amphitryon's wife Alcmena. First act ends in tableau 3 with the gods, demigods, hours of the night, Venus, Bacchus, Bacchantes, and satyrs celebrating love and dancing the Bacchanal. 
In the second act, or fourth tableau, Zeus seduces Alcmena and Mercury seduces Caris, Sosias' wife. Amphitryon and Sosias return to home and a series of comedic situations occurs as confused Alcmena and Caris try to talk with Amphitryon and Sosias. They, angry because they are convinced their wives cheated on them, drive the people of Thebes out of Amphitryon's garden, although they have come to celebrate Greek victory in war against Persians. Fifth tableau in Act 3 begins with Zeus comforting Alcmena, sad about the quarrel with Amphitryon. Soon after, Amphitryon and Sosias come to confront Zeus and Mercury, still disguised as Amphitryon and Sosias. In the meantime, Alcmena tells Caris to go and bring Kikinis, the judge in Thebes. After some time of argument and brawl, Amphitryon and Sosias grab Zeus and Mercury and take them to Kikinis. The people of Thebes come, but even Kikinis cannot resolve the confusion. In despair, Alcmena calls to the gods, the thunder begins, darkness falls and everyone falls on their knees. Final sixth tableau brings a peaceful resolution by dramaturgic technique Deus Ex Machina, here present quite literally. Zeus explains the whole affair and calms Amphitryon, saying that he only intended to test Alcmena's loyalty. Alcmena passed the test and Zeus blesses the two couples and their future children while everyone sings praise to him. Although composed in September 1937, Amphitryon was not premiered until 1940. A few weeks before the premiere, Papandopolo writes two very similar articles as its announcement. One in the Zagreb daily newspaper Novosti and one in the official newspaper of Croatian National Theatre Comedia. The premiere of the opera was on February 13th or 16th, sources differ, 1940 at the Croatian National Theatre with the cast of singers displayed in the presentation. I have not found any information about any further performances of Amphitryon after its premiere. That suggests that after its premiere, and probably a short while after that, it has not been performed in its entirety since 1940. In addition to that, it has been thought for a long time that score was lost, with only the overture surviving and being performed in concerts of Croatian orchestras. Describing his approach to composing Amphitryon, as well as its style and form, Papadopoulos writes My goal was that the music in Amphitryon is in its essence clear, lucid, melodious, full of movement and besides all that, easily accessible to the listener. In this work, I avoided dealing with any musical or other problems. This work, in the end, turned out to be of a neoclassicist style and form, that is, it was composed completely in the style of old classical comic operas. Of course, with the difference being that the musical conception, melody, rhythm, and especially harmonic and orchestral construction of this work entirely correspond to the contemporary spirit and musical endeavors of the present. Amphitryon is not in any sense a national opera, it could clearly not be such already due to its libretto, but that does not mean that in it there is not present our autochthonous musical note. Papandopoulos also points out the following. Concerning its inner structure, Amphitryon relies on the form of old com comic operas composed in the second half of 18th and in the beginning of 19th century. Those were called Zingspiel, with partly spoken and partly sung text. In Amphitryon, musical numbers are connected by either prose or melodramas. In the mode of the classical opera buffa, I composed the overture, solistic arias, duets, quartets and a large-scale finale alongside ballet music and intermezzi." End quote. These lengthy quotations of Papandopoulos' article about Amphitryon are very indicative of both his explicitly stated stylistic direction and compositional goals, as well as his lucid and concise writing style, which is especially to be admired when composer finds himself on a slippery slope of writing about his own music. Melody and rhythm in Amphitryon are very traditional when compared to more avant-garde compositions of his contemporaries. Interesting and representative example of Papandopoulos' melody is the main theme of the overture. Its rhythmic profile and motivic richness resemble the themes of Baroque fugues, especially the longer ones usually composed for organ. Melodic contours are typically neoclassical. 
Occasional large leaps, especially important for recognizing the beginning of theme, are contrasted by frequent use of scales, runs, and melodic sequences. These elements all contribute to the prevalent buffo character of the melody. Maybe unexpected for operatic genre, the main theme of the overture is submitted to a wide variety of polyphonic techniques presented on the slide. Polyphonic treatment of themes and motifs is both a staple of neoclassical style and Papandopoulos' personal style. Papandopoulos' polyphonic procedures often diverge from counterpoint typical for common practice period. The individual relationships between contrapuntal voices are less controlled, which also results in more dissonant vertical events. In addition to these almost coincidental harmonies that happen because of free voice leading, Papandopoulos uses chords made up of fourths, emancipated dissonances and superimposition of two chords. He also occasionally uses bitonality and modal passages, which here and there bend otherwise stable tonality. Closely intertwined with harmony are both texture and orchestration. Textural layers are divided by purely harmonical logic and subsequently given to various orchestral groups depending on their range and desired overall effect. Amphitryon is composed for symphonic orchestra including harp, piano and rich percussion section, mixed choir and vocal soloists. Both in choral and soloist melodic lines, Papandopoulos' musical treatment of text is mostly syllabic, with occasional melismatic passages occurring either during emotionally charged exclamations and cries, or in words of special importance, as shown on the slide. Papandopoulos also sometimes uses stone painting to convey the meaning of the text more effectively and or emphasize dramatic importance of the text in question. In other instances, Papandopoulos uses the whole orchestra or its individual instruments to subtly accompany the emotional content and psychological states present in the libretto and dramatic action. While it is not known to me why the opera, except its overture, was disregarded by theatres after the premiere, that was probably one of the possible reasons the rest of the opera was considered lost for a long time. Nonetheless, both score and piano arrangement of the opera were discovered by Croatian musicologist Davor Merkas in 2011 in Croatia and Austria, respectively. Both sources, written in composer's manuscript, were made available to me by my doctoral dissertation mentor, Sanja Kishu-Juvela, because the students of Zagreb Academy of Music will perform the opera in May 2023 at the Croatian National Theatre in Zagreb, 73 years after its premiere. Interestingly, I found multiple differences in the piano arrangement. The first act was significantly shortened and reworked, the stage directions were translated to German and written in handwriting other than Papandopoulos, and the spoken dialogue was typed on a writing machine. The subtitle of the piano arrangement also differs, stating that Amphitryon is an opera in one prelude, Vorspiel in German, and two acts. The prelude consists of overture, first the blow of Act 1 and the following intermezzo, which is directly linked to the second act instead of the second tableau of Act 1. The German translation and the location of piano arrangement in Karl Böhm's Inheritance suggest that Amphitryon was supposed to be performed in Austria or Germany, maybe even at the time of Third Reich. It is interesting that segments that were cut out in the piano arrangement include Aria of Venus in the style of tango and the Bacchanal in the style of Foxtrot. Those numbers would possibly be considered as the Entartete Musik, forbidden so-called degenerate music. Although very tempting and not improbable as a narrative, I found no clear evidence in support of this hypothesis. The reason for this omission could also be of a mere logistical nature. By not performing the second and third tableau of first act, there is no need for the soloist roles of Bacchus, Venus and the Knight, and the whole opera is shortened by about 185 pages of score out of the total 550. Due to this lack of evidence and the fact that there are no themes connected with totalitarian regimes in the libretto of Amphitryon, I turned to writings on music by Papandopoulos. The most important of Papandopoulos' articles in this regard are Music and Politics, Hitler's Nationalism and Art, 
and the European war will cause the greatest suffering for art and artists. Sanja Meyer Bobetko gives her nuanced interpretation of these articles, quote, Papandopolo clearly distances himself from Hitler's nationalism as a political concept, assessing it as exaggerated. But when writing about cultural politics, he supports the, the endeavors that insist on the renewal of the German spirit in art. Furthermore, precisely that idea leads him to consider as equal Goebbels' conception and the ideology of the national movement, which he himself was a propagator of between the two wars. However, it is important to emphasize that Papandopolo did not like at all to link music and politics. On the contrary, Papandopolo writes, These are two immensely opposed ideas, two parallel lines that can never meet, not even in infinity itself. End quote. These apolitical views are confirmed by already mentioned texts about Amphitryon, where he states that the sole purpose of Amphitryon was to entertain the listener and pull him away from the heavy and gloomy thoughts that pervade and torture him daily. Although seemingly apolitical in his public writings before World War II, Papadopoulos' career as a conductor started to flourish just shortly before the independent state of Croatia, a fascist puppet state of Nazi Germany formed on April 10, 1941 and led by Ante Pavelic and his Ustasha movement. Papandopoulos was employed as a conductor in Croatian National Theatre in Zagreb since 1940. I have not found data that confirm the exact date of the beginning of his employment, so it is not clear whether it was before or after the premiere of Amphitryon. During the dictatorship of Ante Pavelic, Papandopoulos became the chief conductor of the Croatian Radio Television Orchestra in 1942 and the director of opera at the Croatian National Theatre in 1943. He carried out both duties until the collapse of the independent state of Croatia in May 1945. Unlike the vocal fascistic minority in the theatre, Papandopoulos was never truly loyal to the regime of Ante Pavelic, despite the major advances he made in his conducting career. Similarly, most of the theatre's employees were not in the favour of the regime. Considerable number of them even joined the partisans, who in 1945 led the resistance against the regime, helped to overthrow Pavelic and establish socialist and communist Yugoslavia. Papandopoulos composed around 35 works during the period of independent state of Croatia, but none of them have any links with the fascist regime or the Ustasha movement itself. One exception, though, is the Ustasha March, four slightly different harmonizations for mixed male, female and children's choir. After World War II and the collapse of independent state of Croatia, Papandopoulos was judged and convicted for his successful public activity during the previous regime by the newly founded Yugoslavian Court of Honor, as were the other employees of the Croatian National Theatre in similar position. Papandopoulos was forbidden to be publicly active and sentenced to driving a truck with humanitarian supplies in Dalmatia for six months in 1945. After that, he could continue with his conducting career, first by forming and being the director of opera at the theater of Ivan Zaitz in Rijeka. For the rest of his life, he worked as a conductor in theaters in Rijeka, Split, Sarajevo and Zagreb, but shifted his focus primarily on composing. In the contrast with Papandopoulos' compositional output during the independent state of Croatia, he composed a significant number of works that are dedicated to the communist Yugoslavia leader Josip Broz Tito, or that are in some other way connected to the themes of partisan struggle and Yugoslavian communist and socialist regime. For those and other compositions, Papandopoulos gained praise and many rewards during his lifetime. His rich opus numbered over 400 works in the time he died in Zagreb in 1991. In conclusion, it can be said that in the context of Papandopoulos' life and work, he was most autonomous from politics and totalitarian regimes as a composer, conductor and writer on music during the time before World War II. 
During that time, he composed and premiered his comic opera Amphitryon, which serves as a shining example of a musical work explicitly created to oppose politics and diverge its listeners from difficult political situation in pre-war Europe. Thank you for your attention.